Hello, hello. Ninka here from Ninks.com. So, Happy New Year, everybody. It's the year 2021. And um, yes, I think everybody is very excited for this this year. I'm going to show you something I did with this stamp set. I initially bought it to make a card for my dad, which I probably still will do. And um, then it ended up being a birthday card for my husband. And today I'm going to change it into a Happy New Year's card. So I'm going to show you what we do with that. The stamp set is called Whiskey Business and it doesn't come with any dice. It, so it just comes like this. And the card that you're seeing here is the one I made for my husband for his birthday. And it's got a little something different. When you pull on this, it slides open to reveal a hidden message over here. So I will show you how to do this. And this is just a bit of coloring I did. So let's jump into that. All my parts and pieces here off to the side. So we're going to start with a card base and it's early espresso, just your normal eight and a half by five and a half and then scored at four and a quarter. So I did that ahead of time to fold the corners in, use my bone folder to reinforce the crease. So that is our card base for now and then I have a piece of very vanilla somewhere here we go very vanilla for the front and what I'm going to do is just some stamping this has this wood grain texture over here so that's the one we are going to use get my stamping mat here I've feel that I always just get better images if I use my stamping mat and the ink is Cajun Craze. Now with this all the moving parts in this card I just did some oh wait there's the one I just did some marking of where I want what to go because if you stamp this if you don't stamp this correctly then you're Either your message will show off to the side or um, when you punch your hole, something, your mechanism, your sliding mechanism will show. So I made some marks on my very vanilla piece. So the very vanilla piece will fit right onto your card base. And this is five and a quarter by four. And you will actually need two pieces of this if you want to put one in the inside as well. So this is my four, four by five and a quarter piece. And what I've gone and done about a one quarter inch up from your bottom I made a little mark over here and then one about an inch from that so about an inch and a quarter maybe an inch and three eighths at an inch and three eighths I made another mark and that's the top of my textured stamp I want the top of that to be there and I'm going to stamp this all the way through if you have this at the top, it will give you enough space to put your um, your bottle element at the top and then it will fit sort of like it's standing on top of a table over here and it will give you enough space to put your sentiment here and still have it covered and have your one eighth of an inch border around this piece. So this then you make a tick mark at one quarter inch and then at one and three eighths of an inch and that will be the top of your wood grain texture and then you want your sentiment that you're going to put down here to be above this line so above the quarter inch here the other little tick mark I made was at two and three eighths over here and that's where you don't want your sentiment to go past this otherwise it won't show when you pull your 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 strip over so that's that tick mark and then the other ones I did from the right side it is half an inch up made a tick mark there and then we're going to use a half an inch for the mechanism and the moving parts here so that's where the one will be and then from your side one two inches from the right is another tick mark and that will be half an inch over there so I made those marks to make sure that all of this will work smoothly. So I would recommend you do that too. This, um, these marks won't show. So I'm not even going to bother to erase those. That one won't show either because we're going to stamp over it. The only one that I eventually erased was this little one over here. And if you want, you could just 
put that like half an inch from this side and then that would be no it will still show so this is the one you will have to erase all of the other ones you can just leave but i would highly recommend doing doing that especially if you want to make multiples and you don't want to do any of them again ask me how i know okay so we're going to start with stamping this is a rubber stamp it's not a photopolymer so you can't see through it but that is okay so we have a little mark there and i want to start as close to that and it needs to be at the top of that so i'm just going to stamp there once and now i want to try and get this if it overlaps a little bit it's fine put another one there and then the last one over here okay so we just want some texture over there clean off my stamp on my simply chamois that's off to the side here and now I can stamp my sentiment I'm going to use a little bit of tape this sentiment says straight up you're the best now I only want to use the straight up piece so I'm going to show you a little trick some people cut their stamps I just cannot do that we're done with the um, cinnamon cider for now so I'm going to put that away before I stick my finger in it and then we're going to stamp all of our words with early espresso I just have some scotch tape low tech scotch tape just want to make sure I this is long enough no it's not grab another piece Sure, that's long enough and this is what I'm going to do this one I'm just tearing in half because it's a small little strip that I need so that I can save for later this is what I'm going to do I want to use the straight up letters but I don't want to use the rest so I'm just going to cover that up like so and then when I ink up that piece will be covered ink my don't stick that in anything pull that off and then remember we want our, our sentiment above that and to this side and I'm only going to put that over there and I hope that's straight there we go that's good and now what I wanted to put up here to make this like a new year's card is i have this all of these sentiments are from the same stamp set so we used this one over here and i'm going to use that but now i don't want to say cheers to you i want to say cheers to 2021 so i'm only going to ink up cheers to i'm not just going to leave this put this up here i hope that's straight i can't see if i'm straight up there there we go it's not too bad and then this set doesn't have any numbers but i have another stamp set just this one with a lot of letters and a lot of numbers and i just grabbed the numbers over here and obviously we only have one two so i'm going to show you what we're going to do if i can find it here we go so i put the two and the zero and then i move the two over here to make sure i have enough space here and then i put the one and then I put the two back here. I'm going to show you an easy way to do this. So first, we're going to ink up all three of these numbers. Center it right there in the middle. Stamp that there. Now I'm going to clean off my stamp very well so that I don't have any ink left on my zero and my one. Now I'm only going to ink up my two again. And I got a little bit of ink on my zero, which I just want to wipe off. So I'm only going to ink up the two. Let me just move this closer to me for one second. And we stamp the two. There we go. There we have our 2021. Cheers to you. What we're going to do now is quickly stamp. I think we finished all our stamping. So I have a little piece of scrap paper here i'm using very vanilla for this now i've gone ahead and already stamped this and colored it and this and colored it because it's going to take some time to dry i'll show you so i'm only going to stamp one more of that to show you and that i'm doing in basic gray now i'm going to color over this and then with 
ink tents, pencils, and then I'm going to wet it, with, use a water brush on it. Now the Very Vanilla is not watercolor cardstock technically. There is a watercolor cardstock that you can use specifically for that. And also the basic gray smears a bit if you use it with watercolors. Um, if you don't like that, I don't mind. But if you don't like it, use the watercolor um, paper and use Memento black ink. If you use Memento black ink, it won't go anywhere. Okay, so I don't mind. I'm using basic gray and my very vanilla cardstock. Making up my little whiskey glass here. Stamp that anywhere. I'm going to show you how to fussy cut this. It's really quick. It doesn't have a lot of detail. So we just want that to dry a little bit. And then I will show you what I did with my coloring. That off to the side give that a second to dry while that dries I'm going to show you how to score this um, the pieces for the mechanism to make this move I have that somewhere here we go oh we can also do that let's put this over here before I throw it away oops there's my light. Okay, I'm going to use a piece of, what is this? Um, cinnamon cider. It's a cinnamon cider piece. And the size is, remember you can find the sizes in a downloadable PDF on my website. It is one by five inches. And I'm going to emboss this with the tasteful texture embossing folder. Oh, wrapped in texture. It's been my favorite embossing folder so this is not a 3d it's just a normal embossing folder and i actually am filming from home today so i have my stamp and cuts and emboss machine here so i'm going to attempt to put it under here so excuse me if i hit you with it let's move this in here it's big and i here we go okay hope that wasn't too shaky so to use this one we're going to need our number number one we're going to need our number three and we're going to need the embossing folder remember to put the closed edge in first and then another number three plate and then whoo, just going to crank this through I hope it's not wheeling the camera Ooh, too much and there we go and it looks like that and that's embossing now let me move this guy out of the way again so that we have some more space there we go and that is our embossed piece ready before we go on with that i want to continue with my coloring so that that can dry now i know stampin up has some colored pencils and water color pencils. I have Derwent ink tents. I love my Derwent ink tents. So that's what I'm going to use for this. And I'm going to use three colors. So if you have any type of yellow, any type of like mustardy color, and then a reddish color, that will work. What would that probably be in Stampin' Up! colors? Let's guess. Um, any yellow, like daffodil delight maybe and cinnamon cider and i think you can use the um early espresso yeah, that will be good colors now what i did with these is i started with the lightest color and i went over everywhere where the drink will be very lightly i just went over all of that and you see i use the use my finger to stop myself going over the lines if you do that then it will just color quicker that's the only reason without going over the line see just like that so start with that now I'm going to go with one darker color with this is mustard from intense you can use cinnamon cider and I'm just going to do the corners 
and there where the artist drew the little lines and then do the rim and then do the sides not all not don't go over your pieces of ice because they're going to be lighter let's do that area and then do this a bit darker we're going to do the bottom a bit darker and we're going to do the same on the other side turn your cardstock around whichever way it's easier for you to color there's no don't get any points in coloring for keeping your project right way up okay do it the easiest way for you it also helps do um coloring in different directions because it eliminates the streaky lines now this is our darker color we're only going to put our darker color where we want it to be darker so on the rim again right on the edge at the bottom and the other side now here where the artist drew your dark lines you want it to be darker and there you can always make something darker you cannot very easily make something lighter so always start out light and go darker the more layers you have also the more 3D effect you're going to get. Now, you notice I didn't do anything on the eyes because we want that to stay lighter. Now I'm going to use my middle color, the mustard color, and just do my shading again. So everywhere where the artist drew in these little lines, very lightly, you just want to do that to give it some dimension. And then on here, I won't do this one a lot because that's going to be the lightest one. It's closest to the glass on the side so there's not going to be a lot of fluid in between there okay now let me show you why i love watercolors where's my water brush okay now stampin up has water brushes too you can use those i already have derwent and i've been using them for a while just okay so the water you put water in the barrel and then it comes out. You do not want to use a lot of water. I'm just going to wipe this on my Simply Shaming off to the sh side. And you just want a little, you don't want water bubbling out of here when you do this. Otherwise, you can get warping of your cardstock because it's not watercolor cardstock. You want to use the minimum, minimum amount of water that you can. Now, you start at the darker edges and work your way to the lighter edges. You don't want to pull in dark color into your light edges too much. Do not go over your eyes initially. Let's just do the darker areas here. Pull the dark into the light. Do the same over here. Pull the darker area into the lighter areas and blend everything out. See how rich that color gets. Now you don't wanna go over and over this because this ink isn't water colored ink. It's not going to stay it's going to move around so I don't want to let it um, blur too much now I just wiped off the tip of my brush on my simply chamois so that I don't have any of this dark dark color over here again and I'm just very lightly going over my eyes so that we don't pull in any of that very dark color I want this to stay light as light as possible okay so that's the first layer. It's perfectly fine if you want to stop that or you want to use your stamp and blends or that's it. Perfect. But do you see the difference in the richness of the color? This versus this. It's just a building up of colors. You can't go over this immediately because it's wet. And if you use this, it's just going to be like a paint. So we need to leave this to dry again. Okay, which you don't really need to do if you're using the stamp and blend markers. You can just go ahead because one layer is fine i love coloring i like to build up my colors so i'm just going to set that aside over here so that i don't lose them let that dry a little bit while we go on with something else and then you're going to do the final layer just now okay move this out of the way here is our mechanism so we did emboss that one by five inches on the cinnamon cider and then i have two of these little pieces of very vanilla let me see i wrote down the so this is half an inch by one and nine sixteenths. I know it's funny measurements, but that's what's going to make the slider work well, okay? We need two of that, and then we need one bigger piece of eight and a half by three quarter inch. And we're going to score that. I'm going to use my 
just going to use my trimmer and it has a cutting blade do not cut just use your scoring blade to score and we're going to score this at one so score at one and score at five and one quarter five and one quarter inch okay so that will look like that this way again now we're going to fold and burnish now we need to fold and burnish this very well if you don't burnish this down very well your mechanism will will buckle instead of it laying lying flat on the card it will it will do this um, because this will be pushing it it up like that so you really want to burnish this down and you want this to line up okay so that is nice and flat over there we're going to do the same with this I want this all to be straight if you don't have this straight you're going to struggle with your sliding show you how to put this together Now, we have a little bit of wiggle room here. So what I like to do now is, I'll explain to you how this is going to go on the card just now. You have your one inch strip here and then you have your huh, other length there. These are going to go hook over there like that because this is what's going to be stuck down to your card. This one over there like this and then we're going to move this one over whoops to here stay there and this one doesn't want to go on right now there we go okay so this is how it's going to look you have this folding up and you have those two pieces opening at the back so these little tabs over here is what we're going to put glue on to adhere to the card so when they are stuck down firmly and you pull on this this is what is what's going to make this piece when you put that on there move okay so they're going to be stuck and you're going to pull this and that is what's going to make our mechanism the reason why i have two is we don't want this to move up and down like this when you open the cord it needs to be stable and if you have too big a space over here your piece wiggles and then everything just looks loose so we want this to fit perfectly that's why the measurements are so precise okay and this is where our marks come in so this one is going to be adhered over there and this one needs to be adhered over this area line up this edge the half an inch and the two inch will be the edges of your little tabs there so when we have that stuck down there and we need to make sure that this is lined up properly that will be folded over like this and we'll adhere this piece to here like so and if all of that works when you pull on i'm just going to hold them because they're not stuck down they're going to move oh they won't we have to hold them like that it'll move like that okay so first things first oh and remember to have them do the one inch side not to that side otherwise they're going to be adhered like this and your thing won't move first we're going to punch a little hole for our twine or thread I'm going to use my two punch I love this just line this up to the center it has an indicator here and you just want to eyeball the center over here if it's not completely straight I or in the middle you know what I don't mind here we go but that indicator is nice that shows you the middle there you can just line that up I have a piece of linen thread I think do I have it somewhere should be somewhere but it's just a linen linen thread it'll be in the supply list put the hoop through grab your little ends and pull that that's what we're going to use to pull this open and now let's adhere this I like to use my use my silicone craft mat I like to use the liquid glue for this because if I have something 
that I need to move around a bit, I can. Very important, you don't want to put glue on your long piece. You only want to put glue on the little bit of, little bit, little tabs over there. And try and not overdo the glue and try not to get it too to the edges because um, it might spill over. You can use seal for that if you trust yourself to get it all aligned on the first go. I don't. Bring this over to the corner over here. Line that one up with that. Line that one up with your little mark over here. Make sure that everything is straight. And we want to just, you don't have to cover your marks completely, but you just want it to be at least, there we go straight okay so make sure that you have this piece straight here there we go you're just going to hold that for a second and then you're going to make sure if you move it too quickly then the whole thing just comes undone okay we're just going to make sure that we didn't stick our mechanism there we go didn't do that that's great okay now move this all the way back so that you have this one flush with that close this one up and we're going to adhere our cover. Once again, you don't want to put glue on the inside there, just on the outside. And I'm going to use a little bit extra glue here because I have an embossed piece. The minute you're using an embossed piece, you need a little bit of more glue because it only sticks to the pieces that's at the bottom. Okay, now you want to center this, I have an eighth of a border all the way around. And then hold that for a second and then as you can see none of the little measure marks is showing except this wee little one here which we're just going to erase there we go so that's out of the way and let's see we're going to pull and everything lines up perfectly okay let's just push this back this is still a bit flimsy because it's not on the backing yet the minute it goes onto your cardstock backing, this is more stable. I used my, just a stamp and write marker to just give everyone an idea that they can pull here. So when this is closed, I just write, pull over here. I'm sure that most people will understand that if there's something on a funny place, and a word pull that that is what we need to do all right okay i think i'm going to go back to my coloring that's all nice and dry now just going back with my middle color i just want to accent our shadows and where that is is just the bottom and the sides not going to worry too much about the eyes because that needs to be lighter this is our darkest color and i'm just going to put that in the corners and where it is really going to be darker okay and once again just pulling the darker color into the lighter color and that is that doesn't that just make immediately make the color more vibrant even go back and do this one a bit but i won't for your sake i can sit here and color for hours fussy cutting let me quickly show you this it's not it doesn't need to take forever you you leave a small little border i'm not moving the scissors you notice that i'm moving my left hand and the paper your dominant hand is just steadily cutting while your non-dominant hand, my left hand, is just rotating the paper. And that is it. This was exactly the same way. It took not even a minute. Okay. Now I'm going to add my whole front to my early espresso card base the 
some liquid glue. You can use seal if you want. Leave your one eighth of an inch border all the way around. And then just hold it down for a minute. Not even a minute, a couple of seconds. Like so. Now I'm going to use some of my Stampin' Dimensionals on here. And what I found is that this half on the side with these little wings, if I cut that piece like this, look at here. That fits that top piece perfectly. So we won't have a sagging top over there. Just going to add a dimensional on each corner of this. You can also cut one in half and put it there. I think this will be fine. With my piercing tool, remove my backings. Oops, I'm going full. And we have our dimensionals contained, dimensional backings contained. Now this just going to get that straight over here and I'm not putting it on top of my slider it's just oh, like 1 16th above so it won't catch when you close it up okay and I'm going to use um, maybe just the sides I like using the sides of my dimensionals how long is this one it's eh, do two like that on the side over here, like so. It's my first time filming from home and I've made myself a new set up here, which is, which I'm really enjoying because I can actually sit down and do this. It's fun. This one, we're putting, giving it some space, putting it over there and now just to give the whole card, look at me not working on my silicone mat. Be very disappointed if I get glue on my craft mat. Just putting this here and it will give the whole card more dimension. So no dimensionals on the second glass, only a little bit of liquid glue at the bottom here. If you just bend this over, if you see it's lifting up at the top, just give it a bit of a downwards. Bend down there, use, ooh, not like that, there we go, and that is the front of our card, cheers to 2021, straight up, who wants to be with that, okay, and we can just put that back, and the inside, oh, I didn't stamp my inside piece, we can do that real quick, so I just have another piece of very vanilla for Ooh, four by five and a quarter. Check my measurements. And we're going to use the, I'm going to use the basic gray. Again, for the inside, let's ink up our little glass. Is that good? That looks good. I'm just going to put that at the bottom here. And then I'll probably do the same with the envelope. Clean off my stamp. That's the inside. Isn't that pretty? Go. Oh. There is our card. Cheers to 2021 or happy birthday. So I'm looking forward to the coming year and to put out more videos for you all so if you like it please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and um, you are welcome to show me 
your creations that you did. I have all the supply list below. Oh, I just saw I forgot the second piece of thread. I'm sure I probably lost it. That's why I didn't put it on. There we go. Here it is. Okay, this isn't too difficult. I can quickly show you. Let's put that through there. I just thought this gave it a little bit more texture, seeing as bottles usually have this, right? Okay, make a little loop. Put your ooh, edges through there. There we go. And then grab them on the side, hold your not tight on that way, that side. And there we go. That wasn't difficult. And that just gives it a little bit extra texture. So like me, like the channel, please, and subscribe. And I will see you pretty soon. Bye-bye.